Hey everyone, welcome to the channel where we love to talk about movies. Welcome especially if you're new. If you enjoy talking about movies and staying up to speed on what's in theaters and what's worth checking out, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a review. Alright, with that we're going to get into today's review as 2022 has come to a close. I am, and I've seen all the movies that I'm going to see in theaters, I'm pretty sure, uh, that were released in 2022. The one exception is maybe Strange World. But based off the reviews that that had, I'm very, very confident that wouldn't make it onto this list. But we're going to talk my top 10 movies of 2022. So my approach to this was, it was, it's, I, it's very challenging making top 10 lists. And just like for the, the movies that I couldn't include on this list. So I think you should be able to get a good idea of every movie that I've seen just with all the reviews that I've posted on the channel. But if it helps, you can imagine that if I don't have a movie on my list that's in your top 10, uh, that maybe I didn't see it. But if I have, you know, there's just keep in mind the subjectivity of film. And, you know, if you had a film that you liked enough to put in your top 10, that only makes me happy that you loved a film more than I did. Uh, so hopefully this doesn't, uh, you know, get anybody upset. That being said, if your list, uh, if you have your list, top 5, top 10, whatever it is, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Uh, I think it's great to see everyone's uh, different takes on things. But my approach for this was if I had to walk away from 2022 with just 10 films, what 10 films would they be? Uh, or if I could only see 10 films that were released in 2022 and I couldn't see any of the others, me personally, what would I choose? Uh, so this is a very subjective list. It would look different if I was to make a list that was just what I think the best movies of 2022 are, objectively speaking. Uh, but I, I preferred this approach just to say if I, yeah, if I had 10 that I could have and all the rest would just go away, which would I be left with? Which is a very difficult decision. So I think it's part of that, if you have maybe two similar films that were both really good, I'd maybe pick one of them and then leave the other off and go with a different type of film or different genre and that sort of a thing so with that we'll get into it so first up and we'll work our way down this is generally 10 through 1 uh, but the rankings might kind of change depending on what day you ask me but uh, first up though we have uh, so number 10 on my list is Cyrano now I think objectively speaking this wouldn't be in the top 10 but I'm a huge fan of music and especially musicals when they're done well so this being an original musical that gave us new music that I've never heard before that I absolutely loved for that reason on top of it being I think a, a pretty good movie I think it's a good story and everything like that it's filmed well acted well uh, but mainly for the music like if i had to say none of these other movies like if it's not on this list it doesn't exist in my mind for 2022 i want to keep cyrano on the list mainly because of the music and i if the film didn't exist then we wouldn't have its soundtrack and the the music from it so for that reason uh mainly that's what did it to get it onto my top 10 list overall uh, next up, we have The Banshees of Anna Sharon. This was just a really good film, and yeah, not the sort of story I would have ever thought like somebody would write about or make a movie about. It's really sad and really funny at different times in the, in the film, and so that swing of emotions, I thought, is kind of irreplaceable in a film, and the actors just did a phenomenal job overall. I can't, yeah, can't, I'll, across the board for all of these, I can't recommend them enough. Uh, next up, we have Tar. This was... I don't know, this, this movie almost felt like a documentary for how real it felt, even though it's not, uh, based on, I don't think it's, like, actually trying to tell a true story or anything like that, but I think Kate Blanchett does a phenomenal job, and again, I'm a huge fan of music, so focusing a story on an orchestra composer, or not, conductor, excuse me, I, that's, like, right up my alley, and this is one that I, I very much enjoyed and think is definitely worth checking out. This one I just saw earlier this week, so I had to actually update my top 10 from what it would have been a week ago, and that's The Whale. This was just a very emotional film to watch. It's very hard to watch, but such an experience to, uh, to have, and I liked how character-focused it was, and it's, uh, yeah, it's one that I, I highly recommend. Uh, next up we have at number six, this would be The Black Phone or yeah, The Black Phone. This one came out earlier in the year and I'm not a huge fan of horror, but I absolutely loved this film. I think I'd consider giving it an S at the 
at the time that it released. Uh, so far, all of these are A's. Uh, we aren't, we're not quite into the S tier yet. But I thought it was just such a, a well-paced, you know, put-together film that I, I just really liked. And I thought it was very clever how things tied together and that sort of a thing. So I highly recommend it. Surprisingly, a horror film has made it onto my top ten. Then we have The Woman King. This was just a phenomenal movie. I know it's got its controversies around it, but I'm just going to take it as a movie. And as such, it's not trying to be a documentary. It's, you know, it is what it is. So... The, I thought the action was really good. I loved the characters and the emotion throughout the film. And yeah, this was just this was a really good experience. I think I saw it in Dolby Cinema and that was I, I went with somebody who is their first time going to Dolby Cinema. So I think having that as part of the experience as well certainly elevates it. But this is a film that I, I just thoroughly enjoyed. It's a yeah, it's got good action, it's got good drama, what more can you ask for in a film? Uh, so I think that's all my A tier, and then 4 through 1 are all S tier films for me. I'm fairly conservative with the S uh, tier ranking, that means that that's basically the equivalent of Masterpiece in my mind, uh, whereas A tier is, uh, is great. But we have Till as my number 4. This was just such an emotional experience to sit through, and... I, I absolutely loved it. I don't think I've cried this much during a movie as during Till. And I think it really worked to tell the story from the perspective of the mother and kind of see the outcome of the violence through her eyes and not actually see the violence itself. Was That, was, that especially was really impactful. But I think this is a must-see. If you haven't seen Till yet, I, I highly recommend it. Then we have Top Gun Maverick. This was just such a fun film. I think this is... It was it was the highest grossing film of the year until Avatar dethroned it uh, just recently, but it was such an entertaining film, and sure, it's not the most complex story, but it's it's good, and I think the characters are good, the music's good, like all around, ev like this movie is firing on all cylinders, the visuals are phenomenal. I think I heard that they filmed like 800 hours of footage, which got edited down to two hours, which is just crazy. I can't imagine being in that editing room. But yeah, overall, I think this is just a masterpiece of a film. And uh, yeah, very happy for Tom Cruise breaking into the billion dollar club with a movie. Then we have Everything Everywhere All at Once. This movie is just, it's right up my alley for being kind of sci-fi, although I'm a bit more fantasy than sci-fi. And it's just a very clever film for how it's put together. I think the, the rules that they lay down, at least on a single time viewing for the multiverse, seem to make sense. And it's just very well acted, uh, emotional. Again, I think anything in the S tier, it just means that it's firing on all cylinders. So the music was great, the acting was great, story was great. I can't recommend this film enough. Um, and then my number one film of the year, this one is, I don't know that I would say this is objectively the best film of the year, but it's my favorite, and that's The Batman. I absolutely love this film. I think a key part of that is the music. I think Michael Giacchino did such a phenomenal job. So when I'm looking back on films, uh, how much I love the music definitely shapes how fondly I look on the film. But I thought this was just a great film. I think maybe the third act is a little weak. I would get that critique. Some people say it's a little long. I didn't mind the length. I actually really liked it. I liked the world that they created and the kind of tone of Gotham that they have. I liked the characters. So having three hours of that, basically three hours, I really liked and I felt was not too long. So I really like Robert Pattinson's Batman. I certainly hope we see him again. I believe another one's in the works. But um, yeah, I think, I think this is... I, I just absolutely love this movie. I think I saw it twice in theaters. Um, same thing with Top Gun Maverick. I think I saw that one twice. But yeah, that's it's one that I, I definitely would want to take away from the year. Um, as like along with each uh, each of these top ten, uh, this is these this would be the set of movies if I could only see ten movies in the year. This is what I would choose to see and um, and not have anything else. So it was really tough. A couple of them, I was like, there's I think eleven and twelve were really hard to leave off the list. I definitely struggled with kind of which ones to keep and which ones not to. But uh, yeah, let me know what your favorite movies from the year are in the comments below. Uh, I think it was a pretty good year for movies overall. I don't think we're back to the box office revenue we were at before COVID. But I think, 
I think that I think we're back to what the normal will be kind of moving forward. Although we didn't really have any big movies in December other than Avatar. People just kind of got out of its way. Which, I don't know. If it had more competition, would it be doing as well as it is? I don't think so. I think if you had, you know, like Aquaman out there, chances are Avatar would not be as um, as popular. But, I don't know, to each their own. Uh, I'm glad that people are liking Avatar more than I enjoyed it, uh, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Anyway, uh, yeah, share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. And with that, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.